framing for the trout pond remodel is now finished and so we have a walkthrough for you today to check out. We also have some more information during the walkthrough on different things that we did for the framing details, uh, so enjoy. So we have built this dormer up above the front door so that the water is diverted to either side of the front door. You just saw some of the footage of framing for that. So now this is our front entryway and there will be a shed roof that just comes off the top here so that you don't get snow or water down the back of your neck, which doesn't feel very comfortable. Here's the entryway. This is what you see when we walk in. Now that everything is being is done with interior framing, now you can see how it goes from the plan that we had and what it'll feel like. So we just walked in and we have the closet here, which I was concerned would be super awkward sticking out in the middle of everything. However, like Alex said, it's a nice kind of visual barrier between this entry space and the living room area. Yeah, sometimes the problems that we had with open concept, um, which is pretty trendy now, um, is just the fact that you don't get a whole lot of definition between spaces. So unless you have a very talented interior decorator or something like that, or different types of flooring to separate out what areas for what, it can just feel like an uncomfortable open space so it actually works out well because the other side of that closet becomes the living room space so it creates a wall for furniture to go against or decorations or anything um, and then it also creates a, a foyer space so that when people come in they don't feel like they're in the middle of your living room right away so this will be the kitchen um, and you saw the headers going in with this uh, nice big kitchen with an island and then this is the laundry room. Uh, the two by six wall you see here is so that we can put our vent, dryer vent down into the floor system and I'll go out that way with it so it's out the back so we're not seeing that, but that's so that we can hide all of our plumbing and stuff in there. Uh, it also looks like it's supposed to then and it doesn't look like some weird offset wall thing. And the space itself is kind of unique too, just because it has this angled wall in it, um, which was somewhat difficult to work around with figuring out how you were going to place things inside that room. But the homeowner really wanted to, to keep this angle because it helps with the flow as you walk through from the entryway. Uh, if, if you're trying to get into the kitchen area, you don't have this extra corner to go around. It actually creates a nice sight line while you're in the kitchen. You can see through the living room and potentially um, guests coming into the front door. So it was important to keep it, and I think it's going to work out well because we can put washer and dryer to the back. There could potentially be a folding table over here, and there's still plenty of space. We have a nice large walk in pantry that actually shrunk. We ended up moving this wall. Originally, we had it over a little bit, but it ended up being you know, again, one of those awkwardly large things, <laughs> areas, so what, it's just less than six feet, somewhere around five feet now, Yeah. Um, which will be nice to have, you know, shelving along this side and plenty of room to walk, but it also opened up the kitchen so that we had another roughly a foot, I can't remember exactly what it was, I think it was roughly a foot. Yeah, I think we're getting the foot, but it's, it's weird because it's different for everybody depending on how important this pantry space is to you and how you want it set up. But if you don't really know, you just need to have like a bare minimum amount of space to have adequate shelving and walking space. But right, for you, instance, if you want to have shelving on both walls, right. then you need it a little wider than what we have it, because then you'd have you, want to walk <laughs> you could do the penguin shuffle. But then I think um, what it did for the kitchen was we ended up at, are we at 16 feet? I think roughly, yeah, 15 and a half, 16 feet. Yeah, so it creates 
It creates enough space for the kitchen island through here. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long the kitchen island is supposed to be. But eight feet. Eight feet, so. I mean, it takes up a lot of room after you have cabinets, a refrigerator, you have more cabinets over here. And you still need to have comfortable walking space through here. This is kind of a pass-through entryway here. That door opening here will be coming in from where the garage is. It's an unattached garage. But that'll be the walkway in for where the homeowners typically will come in. The stairs have moved. You can see where the old stairs were. And they've moved over into their own little corner, uh, which is good. It really made this a lot easier to work with around here. Yeah, I mean, this whole space now becomes usable because there's not this enormous hole in the middle of it that you have to work around and have an entry space for. You can actually section things off to create usable spaces, so. Right, some sort of hooks or cubby area in here. It's always nice to have more or less a drop zone or a spot for your coat. Pocket door, good option when you don't want a door swinging in or out somewhere. Um, I can't say I'm overly thrilled with, you know, <laughs> how wiggly they can be. However, they are a very good space saver. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, toilet and sink. We'll just go in there. And then you have a nice big wide open dining room after you come through the pass-through. I don't know what else to call it. Right. Um, but it's, it's a rather large uh, dining room area, which will be nice with a massive window like you just saw. <laughs> yeah, so this window, is, light. this window is actually eight foot wide by, is it five foot tall? Yeah. Roughly. Yep. So that's just an enormous amount of daylight that'll be let in. And out this side of the house, this is actually facing west. Yes. And then that, that faces east. So you're gonna get morning sun coming into that half and then even, you know, and evening sun over here. So while you're having dinner, you'll have nice views out there with the setting sun, hopefully. Then we kind of come straight through into, I believe what's gonna be just a seating area. Um, where that large ladder is, is actually where a, a wood stove is going to end up. In one of the earlier videos, you had seen that there used to be an old chimney that went straight up through here, and that all got tore down. And it was just kind of an awkward placement for the way everything was going to be set up. So we just decided to take it out of the middle of the room and, and put it off to an exterior wall so that way you could actually move through here comfortably. This wall here that's left is the only original wall. <laughs> the think. orange colored one. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is white, this one's orange. Yeah, all we ended up doing was re-securing that properly so that way it's plumb and straight and we can build off of it. One, one interior wall, that's all that's left here. So you saw a lot of this framing already, um, so we'll go through it maybe a little bit quicker. We have a bathroom over here with a transom window in the shower. Conveniently located above chest height. <laughs> And that'll all be nice tile shower the whole way over there. So that's that'll be massive, which will be really nice. Hall of closet, bedroom, bedroom. We have nice step-in closets. They're big enough that you just kind of step in and there's lots of room there. And nice big windows. Again, this is the east side, so you'll have some nice light coming in here. Right now, since it's still kind of winter-ish, that's the south side. So there's lots of light coming in there. Uh, this is a large closet with a freshly made scuttle hole. Right. Which we have set up to be able to be uh, spray foamed the same way as we would want to do the exterior walls. Uh, very important detail that I think a lot of times gets missed on some of the higher efficiency builds um, is actually the scuttle hole. So uh, we wanted to do, we already built, Alex built, I can't take credit, a cap for this that's already basically an exterior wall that we will lay down on top of the scuttle hole and it'll have weather stripping all the way around it so that it is able to compress that. 
Um, other times it's just maybe a, a chunk of fiberglass insulation above a piece of drywall, for instance. Um, and that creates kind of a, a pretty good air leak. <laughs> and what we're doing now is we'll, we'll put a return drywall on the interior of it, maybe four inches or so, five inches. And then there'll be a drywall cap that covers that that will be finished, so it will just look like a little recessed portion of ceiling. And it's just kind of a cleaner transition. I don't know if it's more modern looking, potentially. Sure. Um, because Similar to a drywall return on a window. Yes. Yeah. And it just, it looks nice, it's clean, it's easily finished, and it's also easily accessible. So some of the old scuttle holes, you have, you know, a picture frame trim ring around it that has screws in it or something like that that you have to remove and get out of the way in order to access it. But this will be a little bit simpler. And then the lid itself being all the way up on, on the top side, it'll have a latch system on it that'll, that'll keep it compressed and you would just simply have to remove the latches in order to access it after that. So it's a little bit simpler. All you need is a ladder to get up there. I think it functions really well, but I'd be curious to know if there's anybody else out there that has a better, more efficient way to do it. And we could sit down and talk about it. We're all ears. I would love to know. But. So this is the bathroom then for this bedroom. Nice double vanity as seen here. And then another pocket door into a throne room. I always like to call it a throne room. So the toilet over here and it has its own little its own little room. And this is a very large walk-in wet room. Right, it's considered a wet room. Right, it's considered a wet room. So the idea is that we're going to have shower heads in this wall. Actually, I think that got swapped. In this wall, we're planning on having shower heads, and uh, two of them, and over here will be a freestanding tub. So this whole area is gonna end up being tiled and it'll be one big wet room area. Now, why I'm not concerned about putting water lines in this exterior wall is because we're spray foaming. And so we're gonna have three inches minimum of spray foam, which gives me room to run water lines up inside of that. In addition to the half inch of foam board that we're putting on the outside. Traditionally, especially in this climate, you don't, ever ever want to put yeah want to put water lines in an exterior wall because it's going to freeze right however with spray foam now we are making sure that the outside stays outside and now it doesn't even matter anymore right and to be fair we don't necessarily like putting water lines in the wall no matter what or i mean exterior wall we would prefer not to but in this case the homeowner actually has a really unique shape soaking tub that they want to put in here and depending on the exact angle that it is and which end you enter from and all that it may have to be oriented in a way where it does have to go on this side of the room right. instead of this side of the room right so it just, it's, it's, what it is. it's ordered we're gonna see i we were debating what actual shape it's called right you'll have we'll have to see in the future video what the actual shape is but it's a, a unique shape yeah i don't think there's a definition for it that's this right <laughs> but either way it either needs to go here or it needs to go here depending on which shape it is. right right it'll work no matter what and that's actually one of the benefits of having an entire wet room because you can do whatever you want in it put it wherever you want and the whole thing will be waterproof so. right especially the freestanding because it doesn't matter where you run your yep. water lines and drain will come up out of the floor and Nothing is getting finished in the basement, so everything's very accessible yep. from underneath. So we'll just pop it up through there. That'll be it. Yep. Well, thanks everybody for joining us today in this episode to uh, get a look at all the framing that we've been doing so far on this project. There's gonna be a lot more to come. Um, some of the next things we're gonna be doing, we're gonna have windows going in. We're gonna be doing soffit and fascia. We've got a exterior foam detail that we're gonna be doing. So all that's gonna be coming up in the future. And we hope that you join us for that as well. So make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of those upcoming episodes. Also, if you want to see more, you can see some pictures and other behind the scenes things on Facebook and Instagram. You can find us there. Um, and thanks for joining us. Thank you.